So I've been having some second thoughts about Blade Runner 2049. I can't really put my finger on it because I really enjoyed the film at the time. And it was in, it was enjoyable. It, lots of sounds, lots of incredible special effects and incredible set plays. The scenery was amazing. Like Everything was was great in terms of its production value and it's well acted, well directed, it's well written, it's got a decent story and um, there's some things that people have kind of moaned about like the length of the film and the um, kind of the general feel or pacing which I really don't have a problem with, I thought it was fine as it was but um, I left feeling somewhat dissatisfied and I'm trying to put my finger on why so I'm going to talk through why and um, obviously there's going to be some spoilers so if you're not willing to have the film spoiled then please stop but I think the thing that bugs me is the ending um, particularly the ending the ending really I don't get it and the, the, the you know I'm, I've gone to see it with some friends and we're chatting on the way home and one thing that just doesn't make any sense is what was the plan? What was anyone's plan? So I can kind of understand Kay's plan, or Joe. Like his plan is to is to go find who he thinks is his real dad. Deckard's plan is to stay away from everyone. Wallace's plan is um, if I can find the child, then I can have a greater uprising. Because for some reason I can't produce on a production line more replicants than I can birth which to me doesn't make a lot of sense but I understand the logic even if I don't understand the, the semantics so but what on earth were the other replicants doing like they, they so they bug Ryan Gosling they bug Kay and they you know he um so they're tracking him and he goes to find Deckard and they have a bit of a fist fight and they kind of sort themselves out and it's kind of going okay and then scary old replicant with the ponytail and the fringe like she turns up and um, she takes Deckard away and sends him off on a ship and for some strange reason despite killing his girlfriend doesn't kill Kay which again I don't really understand there doesn't seem to be any narrative purpose to that they know he's dangerous they know like presumably she found him through Robin Wright Penn's computer oh, sorry Robin Wright's computer but Again, I just presumed at the time that she was using the tracker, but she wasn't because the prostitute lady was, and she wasn't actually friends of... You, you know what I'm saying. So, she hasn't killed him, which is fine, but then the guys who are tracking him just turn up and, and, and take him and go, right, you're going to help us with the uprising. And it's like, well, why, why didn't you just talk to him at the time? Like, why did you have to track him and wait for him to basically get into mortal danger before you decided to actually tell him anything useful? They could have told him the whole plan. They could have told him um, all about the baby, about how he's not actually the child. Like, they know he's working things out. That's why they go and research what he knows, and they, they realise where he's at. So why do they leave it? And why are they tracking him, and why... They seem to leave a lot to chance in their plan because they leave to chance the ridiculous decision to leave him alive when Decker gets captured. You either take him with you or you kill him. You surely don't just leave him out for revenge when you know he's a dangerous replicant Blade Runner. But they do. And then, after that, they tell him that they need him to kill Deckard. But that's all... The, ma the, the master plan of he has to kill Deckard only really seems to have materialised because now Deckard might lead Wallace to the child, which is a real strange assumption to make, because if I know anything about Deckard's character from the original Blade Runner, Blade Runner and from the sequel, is that he doesn't seem the type to just suddenly decide to, um, to do what Wallace wants. So obviously narratively that works out, because it has to, because Ryan Gosling needs a conflict to solve by the end, but I don't really get why that all had to happen. And... Their plan is so based on chance. Like, what were they going to do if um, if Ryan Gosling got captured? They can't then airship in and say, by the way, mate, you're in a prison with Deckard. Could you kill him for us? And if they really needed Deckard dead, why didn't they tell him before the whole problem in the first place? I guess the problem is they don't need him dead. They just decide they need him, and then why were they tracking him? Was it just in case? 
just use them as a lead. Maybe the replicants are tracking loads and loads of people just in case they become narratively useful. And if Ryan Gosling hadn't been narratively useful, then someone else would have been narratively useful. So it's just like, okay, you've, you've worked out the jackpot. We need you. The whole tracking thing just seems a bit... a bit contrived, I have to say. And for a film that I think was trying to be really cleverly and carefully put together and to kind of build this plot that seems to me like a bit of an oversight like and maybe there's something I'm missing and if I am then please feel free to tell me but I I just feel like a bit dissatisfied of the logic of the ending and the other reason I feel a bit dissatisfied of the ending is that so don't get me wrong I like an open ending because an open ending like you, you can decide for yourself what's going to happen and maybe we're, what we're supposed to do is presume that um, they now have everything they need for the uprising because this girl who has been sheltered since she was A to create people's dreams and memories so doesn't seem to have any real ability to fight or, or inspire but I guess because she was birthed she can inspire the revolution anyway um but she's no Sunny from iRobot, and I cannot re- believe that I'm comparing a classic like Blade Runner to iRobot, but I am. There are better characters who inspire replicant slash robot uprising, and there's probably films that create greater existential questions about the lives of robots or androids than, than this film. And it's just less so open. Like, What's the point? Like, If Decker goes to see his daughter presumably k dies um they're gonna they're gonna prove that they're valuable and wallace is none the wiser really he doesn't realize that his prize angel has been killed so i kind of look at it all and go what are you setting up here because i feel like if 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 dennis villeneuve is looking for a franchise here he's come to the wrong place i think it seems a bit disrespectful to something like blade runner to just say i'm gonna franchise you we're gonna have blade runner 2050 and 2051 and 2052 just make your 30 years later sequel you've been given 2 hours and 43 minutes make it make sense by the end wrap it up nicely and if you want to be really clever then 30 years time let's make another 30 years later sequel in the same universe because to me that seems to make more sense and you know maybe that's what they are going to do but just the whole openness of it and like, like as I said an open ending with kind of closed boundaries makes sense but this is just so open I'm kind of like what on earth is going to happen next do you want us to worry about what's going to happen next like are we supposed to make it up for ourselves like an inception you're supposed to you know it's a closed book like there's not going to be an inception too so you can work out for yourself whether it's a dream or not and all the rest but like this isn't like that like this is are you expecting me to think you might make a sequel or not I don't know I guess I also just think Decker's a waste of time. Like, this film seems to me about a... It's a film that spent a lot of money and doesn't seem to necessarily care about making a lot of money. Like, it says, well, screw you, I'm going to make my blockbuster, I want to, so I'm going to have, like, this um, kind of invasive soundtrack, which is, you know, really well done because Hans Zimmer is great, but it basically just goes... the whole time through, and... I'm going to um I'm going to have a really slow plot and not a lot's going to happen but it's going to happen gradually and it's going to be hours long and it's not going to be loads and loads and loads of action so you're going to see it pitched as an action film and then go oh it's not an action film I don't know if I want to see it like it's going to really appeal to Blade Runner fans and it's going to appeal to fans of like that ge- that genre and that generation but it's not necessarily going to appeal to to young moviegoers or current moviegoers necessarily in the same way I think that's why the the box office isn't seeing the results it wanted it's almost like they made a film and went we don't care if we make any money and by all means it doesn't like they're gonna make any money maybe they may not even make their budget back so they seem to be happy with that but the one thing they do to kind of say hey guys come and see the film we've brought him back Deckard is in the film again and he's in it and t- t- it, narratively it makes a lot of sense for him to be in it because obviously he's the father of the child and the child is the total central focal point of the film but I don't really think Harrison Ford needed to be in it. Seems like you've spent a lot of money there on a waste of time. Because what does he do? He has a little fight with Ryan Gosling. We think he's going to be the dad and maybe you have a dad and son bonding bit, but then you don't. 
then you think, oh, maybe the point of putting him in it is to show how he dies because he's got to be killed and, and he sac almost he sacrifices himself for the sake of his daughter to an extent because he, he will allow Kay to kill him. But that doesn't happen either. Kay saves him, um, which, again, like annoyed me. And then he goes and meets his daughter and I'm like, you don't even have to. Why? What's the point? She doesn't even seem to know who you are. Um... He doesn't do anything useful. He has no real narrative purpose. His narrative purpose is in the first hour and a half before he turns up. When he turns up, it's almost like he stops being so useful. Like before, you're kind of like, oh, right, well, he was the father of the child, and the child is really useful and interesting. And suddenly you're like, I just don't care anymore. You look like you got dragged out of bed. And the way you've dressed, like you really didn't want to be there. I'm not sure you even know what you're doing, Harrison. How many times are you going to be dragged into some random sequel for a film that was famous 30, 40 years ago and have your life threatened, Harrison? I don't know. It just... I just don't see the point. So, all in all, I mean, some things are great. Jared Leto and Ryan Gosling were amazing. But I'm a little disappointed despite the fact it was a good film and I'm going to stand by my convictions and say it's still a 7 out of 10. Sorry. <laughs>